You're listening to the Hello Awesome Podcast, and this is episode number 88. Welcome to the bonus episode, guys. I thought I would leave you with a different kind of episode before the year was over instead of just ending on my testimony, which honestly was a big one, but I really do appreciate you guys, and I wanted to just have a heart-to-heart before 2020 ends because we all know it has been a doozy. Am I right? I can't even believe that we have reached the end of our fourth podcast season. How crazy is that? Before we get into the show, I wanted to remind you of just a few things. If you have been loving the Hello Awesome podcast, I have a gift for you. Just leave a five-star review in iTunes and email me a screenshot. My email is helloawesomeshop at gmail.com and I will exchange your kind words with a free digital devotion of your choice. Yeah, free. This includes any of my books too. Honestly, I appreciate you coming here every single week, showing the podcast some love. It honestly has blessed me so, so much. If you want to become a supporter of this ministry to make sure that the podcast keeps cranking out the content you enjoy, consider becoming a Hello Awesome member. Guys, I know this sounds uncomfortable, but it takes money to run a podcast. I have to actually sign up and I have to actually pay a fee every single month. And so members contribute monthly to show their support for the ministry and also gain exclusive access to stuff like the podcast mini series, The Real 15, which are episodes that are 15 minutes or less. Also, all the digital devotional files that I have, including the ebooks and the audiobooks for my books, are uploaded to the site so members can download all of them right away. You also get access to a bunch of cool downloads, art printables, Bible study notes, and much more. So please, if you want to support the ministry and you want the podcast to continue, consider joining our Patreon. You can find it at www.patreon.com backslash hello awesome for just $5. That's right. You can sign up for just five bucks, trade in that price of a cup of coffee for a cup of awesome. Oh, and one more thing. If you want more inspiration on a weekly basis right in your inbox, sign up for my Saturday devotions. That's right. Every Saturday morning, I send little bite-sized insights to my growing devotional community, reaching over 800 people across the nation. It's really incredible. You won't get spammed or get a thousand emails a day from me. Don't you just hate that? I would never do that. So this is me, JC, promising to only zap one email your way, filled with encouragement and biblical truth to help you in your faith. Head to HelloAwesomeMinistries.com and fill out that cute little pink box at the top of the page. You don't want to miss this. Okay, guys, here we go. This is the last episode of 2020. Here is episode number 88 that I am calling How to Grow in 2021. Hey, guys, I'm JC. Are you ready for real conversations about faith, business, and life? Me too. This is the Hello Awesome podcast where I bring forth topics and truthful insights that will encourage you to make intentional choices and pursue God with your whole heart. Are you ready to say hello to the awesome blessings that God has for you? All right, let's do this. The seasons might be changing, but our amazing sponsors are sticking around to bring some deals exclusively to Hello Awesome listeners. Nuggles desires every lady to embrace modesty with style and comfort. I love the durable materials they use and all the fun patterns to choose from. Use the 10% off code HelloAwesome10 during checkout at Nuggles.us to snag your new favorite fall outfit right now. If you're looking for super cute scrunchies that'll last in your hair all day, and yes, even long hair to your knees like mine, look no further than So Vita. I use them every day. Use coupon code podcast for 10% off your order right now at sovita.com. That's S-E-W-V-I-D-A.com. Get that hair off your neck and into a cute top knot with one of their scrunchies right now as you go grab that pumpkin spiced latte this fall. 
Blue Thistle Taylor has timeless dresses, skirts, and handbags. Mandy truly has classic modest pieces that you will love for years to come. Just use our special code HelloAwesome for 20% off your order on BlueThistleTaylor.com. That's B-L-U-E-T-H-I-S-T-L-E-T-A-I-L-L-U-E-R.com. Answer me this. Are you ready to switch out your toxic bath and body products for a better option? Rachel over at Oneness Essentials can hook you up. She makes handmade soap, body butter, and lotion that not only look and smell amazing, but they're great for sensitive skin. Use code HelloAwesome for 15% off your order when you shop at onenesssoapbiz.com. Nestled in a lovely brick and mortar store in Starks, Louisiana, Dress Like an Angel represents the beauty of modesty through their stunning dresses, skirts, extenders, layer tops, and more. They even carry items for young girls like their best-selling lace tights. Use our exclusive discount code HelloAwesome for 10% off your order at dresslikeanangel.com. A special thank you to all my sponsors who want to bless Hello Awesome listeners. I appreciate you and thank you so much for supporting the podcast. Okay, I forgot one more thing. Have you been blessed by the ministry of Hello Awesome on Instagram and here on the podcast? Consider becoming part of our exclusive membership program on Patreon. When you sign up today, you will unlock access to over 10 posts featuring devotional downloads, ebook and audiobook files for my new book, Give It to God Girl, printable modest fashion coloring pages, and the latest episodes of my brand new mini podcast series, The Real 15, which is only available to members. I post a new episode every week and will continue bringing special access to some really awesome content. Think of it like a secret club, and this is your invitation. Tap the link in the description of this episode or go to patreon.com backslash hello awesome. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com backslash hello awesome to become a member and start enjoying your full all access pass today. Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast. Surprise, I am hitting you with a bonus episode right before the new year, so enjoy. You know there have been a lot of topics that we have covered here these past four seasons on the Hello Awesome podcast, from modesty to doctrine, from eating disorders to depression, and so much more. We have heard from some amazing women of God who have overcome hardships and traumas, We've dove into the word, learning for ourselves what being apostolic really means and how to navigate life as a creative believer. I have been incredibly privileged to be your host and blessed that the Lord has placed me in this role for such a unique ministry in this amazing time. God is truly doing a great work through the Hello Awesome podcast. And the future is bright for the podcast. We are not stopping. As this fourth season wraps up, I already have a list of possible podcast guests planned for next year. I've been so prayerful regarding topics and conversations that we will have here in 2021. It's honestly amazing to me that a new year will begin in no time at all. God is not done with this ministry And I am so grateful for that. As we head into the colder months here in the Northeast, I have been finding myself stepping away from social media to gain more clarity on Hello Awesome as a whole, and not just the podcast, but in whatever I'm doing, especially in ministry. And in fact, the podcast is probably the most polished thing about the ministry because uh, it's just so much fun and I get to just talk with you guys and I share my heart. And it's probably the best thing that I've done besides my actual books that I've written. Just a few months ago, I felt the Lord direct me to slim down my online shop and only offer limited items. And I'm feeling another shift on the way. I wish I could tell you why, but I can't because I don't know. And that happens sometimes. I've been deep in prayer over this ministry and how God wants to use my talents. 
So as we take a podcast break here in the next couple of months, and as we move into season five, the Lord has asked me to also take a break from social media. Two months without Instagram is scary for someone who uses the platform as a way to sell books and promote the podcast, as a way to connect with community and build friendships, but it's necessary. Do you know what is even scarier for me? Missing out on something the Lord is trying to teach me, but I'm not quiet enough to receive it or listen to him. So for the months of December and January, I will not be active on Instagram. You will not see me in stories. You will not see my feed. However, if you need me for any reason, shoot me an email at helloawesomeshop at gmail.com. There has been a scripture placed on my heart and I wanted to share it. Luke 16.10 says, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. I want to be faithful no matter the size of the audience, the ministry, or the platform. I want to trust God in all aspects of my life and days, including the time I spend on social media and creating content. What I have found is that it's too easy for us to allow our phones and social media to be our masters. And sometimes it feels like we are in control and we're good when in fact we're not at all. Now, I've said this many times on the podcast and still agree that social media is the biggest tool we can use as believers right now in this nation, in this country, and it can be a positive thing. For me right now, I haven't abused it or used my influence poorly. I haven't been engorging in it or doing anything like that. But stepping away from Instagram for a while, you know, it's not a knee-jerk reaction because I've sinned. It's just taking a break in response to God who has asked me to do it. And the only reason I believe that he's requiring me to do it is because there are things that he wants to teach me but maybe I'm too distracted to pay attention the way he wants me to. I want to remind us of a few things today, how we can grow in 2021, to encourage us to seek the Lord's will above our own. First, earth is not our home. It is temporary, but heaven is our home, and it's so easy to get caught up in what's happening down here that we forget to prepare ourselves for what comes afterward. Recently, I talked about growth on Instagram and in my email devotions. Are you signed up to receive my Saturday devotions? I hope you are, because if you're not signed up to receive the devotions that I send out every Saturday morning to your inbox, you are missing out on some good conversations that we are having there. I want you to go to HelloAwesomeMinistries.com and sign up in the pink box at the top of the page. Saturday devotions are not stopping during my December-January break, by the way. I just send you one email a week every Saturday morning. You don't have to worry about me spamming you and sending you a bunch of emails every day or even every week. I send one email a week, and I might send a second email for the entire month. But that's it. You have my guarantee. But in one of the devotional emails that I sent recently, I mentioned three things about growth. That's good to keep in mind. And so I'd like to share them here with you today. Growth is an ongoing process. To grow is to mature and learn. If we feel like we are above being taught, we're actually limiting our potential. We should never feel above sacrifice and obedience. In Matthew 16, 24 through 26, Jesus says these famous and profound words. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I fear we bought into a trend in this modern world that has told us in order to be successful, we must burn out. We must hustle and stretch ourselves thin. 
that in order to reach our dreams, we have to keep reaching, ignoring rest. But this is opposite of what Jesus is telling us. Over and over again, we find in the Word of God people who sacrifice and are obedient to Christ, denying themselves in exchange for more. The question we have to ask ourselves is, what is more? What value does more time give us? What does it matter if we have more followers, more sales, more money, more talent, more influence? What is the purpose of more if not for his kingdom and God's plan for our lives? There's absolutely nothing wrong with entrepreneurship and having a small business. But there is something wrong when we forget that our original calling is to follow Jesus and his will. We can work hard and build a business, but Jesus must be at the center teaching us along the way. And if we have quieted the voice of God out of convenience, then it becomes more than a life issue. It's a heart issue. This is the biggest problem in politics today. Just look around our nation right now. We are divided and it's hurting the next generation, whether we like it or not. We have quieted the voice of God in exchange for convenience on both sides. Instead of putting on the whole armor of God, we are trying to fight into the armor of the enemy, fighting battles we may not even need to fight, and using weapons the Lord hasn't designed for us to use. I talk more about this in episode 67, Offenses and Fences. Go listen to that after this episode for a study on the armor of God in relation to how we should act as believers in America right now. As we talk about growth, I don't want us to forget that we are set apart for his purpose. That in the process of growing, we might become successful in business or ministry, but if we are not growing in God, then it is all in vain. Let's get into the three things about growth whether it's personal or business or spiritual, to keep in mind at all times. Number one, steward your influence well. This is something that I talk about often and it's actually been in the forefront of my mind recently. It can be applied to many aspects of life. A few years ago, the Lord led me to write a book about the power of influence called The Glitter Effect. We actually just celebrated two years since the Glitter Effect was released, and I cannot believe it has been out in the wild for two years. You can find it in the Hello Awesome shop, or you can search for the Glitter Effect on Amazon. But I believe God wanted me to write a book about influence because we need to be reminded that what we say and what we do does matter. Our words and actions affect so many other people and we are called to be examples of God to the rest of the world. We should always ask God to help us be more aware of our influence and pray for guidance as we walk alongside one another in this life. For example, as parents, we've been given the task of training and discipling our children. It may seem tedious and exhausting, but it's ministry. God is giving us the opportunity to show up for our little ones and meet their needs in this season of life. We might pray, Lord, use me in a mighty way and think about becoming a leader of a church group or even a minister on the schedule. But learning to steward the influence you have in a small group, like a few kids in need of guidance and boundaries in your own home, will prepare you for any future influence you may have in the church. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Growth is learning to steward our influence well, and knowing that when we haven't, who to run to in order to make it right. We are not going to do everything perfectly. That's impossible. However, We have the Lord Jesus who can guide us back on track and help our influence be effective the way he desires it to be. To grow is to understand that we have a responsibility to steward our influence well. Whether we have 100 followers or 10,000, whether we have one child or none, whether we have a position in church or are a faithful member, 
It honestly does not matter. We must meet the needs of those we come in contact with and allow God to use us as the vessels that we are made to be. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. Number two, progression over destination. You will never make it. There, I said it. The idea of idolizing a destination to reach is common, but we have to remember that growth is a process. This is a journey to becoming, to being better every day. And even if you reach that huge milestone or goal that you've had, you're going to still want more. You're going to still have more. And that's okay. We have to understand that it's not about the end. It's all about what we are learning day by day. Hello Awesome just celebrated seven years since launching. And I have had countless messages over these seven years from girls trying to pick my brain over the key to success. It feels like they're trying to find the secret formula to unlock everything they've ever wanted. But that's not how life works. That's not how anything works. I was in their shoes. That's how I know. I listened to as many podcast episodes as I could, read a bunch of blogs, paid for courses to learn more, and even though it helped an incredible amount and I do not regret any of it, I had to step off the wheel because it will always keep going and going and we have to learn when to get on and for how long. Or we can have information overload instead of just when we really need it. We have made destination an idol and almost worship the idea more than the God who can bring us there. Goals and dreams are really good things. What are you learning as you work to achieving those things? Do you feel closer to God or are you being pushed away from him? Real growth is growing in harmony with the one who placed the breath inside of your lungs. Real growth is humility and sacrifice. Real growth is saying, Less of me, Jesus, but more of you. It's understanding that the process is rewarding too, not just where you are headed. Are we becoming who God wants us to be? Or are we striving for an image that will never satisfy? As I sit here and speak to you, I feel more vulnerable than ever because I was so focused on making it to a destination rather than allowing God to grow me in the process. And I'm not saying that I didn't grow, but I believe I did hinder the amount that I grew because my focus at the time was wrong. It's not about the final destination of Hello Awesome or finally feeling like an accomplished author or artist. It's really about the progression I've made to becoming more like Christ in my work and does the fruit of my work glorify him or not. And so I do pray daily that what I'm doing is not for making a name for myself, but promoting the name that is above all. All names, especially mine. Number three, celebrate small victories. Psalm 104 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Choosing to celebrate the small victories in life and business isn't being ignorant to what can be. It's understanding and noticing what we have and acknowledging the one who has blessed us. Because in all honesty, small victories are not really small at all. Every single victory you have in life is a big win. Whether it's a goal within motherhood or a business venture gone right, we need to celebrate even the small things. It will encourage us to keep moving forward and striving to become who the Lord wants us to be. It will inspire us to stay in his will and not give up. I can remember getting my first sale in the shop. It was so amazing. I was thrilled. I was so excited that I did a happy dance right there in my pajamas. And just so you know, anytime you buy from a small business, especially from an apostolic business, they do a happy dance. At least they should. And I still get excited every time someone believes in what I'm doing and decides to support my work and a sale comes through. That's incredible. But here's the reality, friend. If I compared my one sale that day to someone else's 10 daily sales, I would be discouraged. 
the excitement I felt would be snuffed out quickly. Of course I would feel terrible. I'm focusing on the wrong thing. Instead of allowing myself to dwell in the victory and being encouraged, I'm trying to determine my worth based off of somebody else's results. That is not how you grow. That's how you die. That's how the life gets taken out of you and you shrivel up, not wanting to continue because you're not as good as the person that you're comparing yourself to. And this needs to stop. Comparing victories is so abstract because what might be a victory to you might not feel like a victory to me. We are not to covet our neighbor's possessions or even achievements. Growth is about seeing the good things in your life and appreciating them. Because if we don't have thanksgiving in our hearts towards small victories, we might not realize a small victory is actually a big one. And this is for anything. It doesn't matter if you're in church. It doesn't matter if you are on the platform. It doesn't matter if you are in business. If you are a mother, we cannot compare our victories to somebody else's victories. It is not fair. Growing means that we must adopt an attitude of gratitude. We must appreciate each win, no matter the size, because each win matters. This is so true spiritually as well. How many times have you cornered yourself into a self-deprecating place because you compared your current situation with somebody else's? Joy is depleted because we are not a preacher yet, or we haven't reached a position yet, or we haven't won a soul yet. But can I tell you something? You will not have a growing, mature Christian life if you're only celebrating big victories. You should be grateful for every single moment God is glorified and you are invited into the kingdom work for his name's sake. You should be grateful for every moment you get to live for Jesus. It is a privilege. Growing is saying, I don't have to do this, but I get to do this. I get to worship the Lord. I get to read my Bible. I get to spend time in prayer with God. I get to raise these children. I get to be married to this wonderful, imperfect man as God works in my imperfect heart too. We get to do this life and there is no victory too small that we cannot celebrate. I think we have to reevaluate our definition of growth. Does growth have more worth because of its fruit? Or is the process of growing full of fruitfulness that brings us a greater reward no matter the end result? This is what I'm learning. And can I confess how much freedom there is in this mindset shift? Now, I know that the fruit does matter spiritually. And I do know that we will be known by our fruit. But in order to get good fruit, we have to have our roots settled in good soil. And we have to settle it in the word of God and in God himself. And we have to have a better attitude in the process before the fruit comes. And that will bring true success. It's okay to have goals and dreams, to have prayers and promises that you're waiting to be fulfilled. But God can make you feel as though you're not lacking anything when you're with him in the middle of the process of it all. 2 Peter 3.9 says that, 2 Peter 3.9 says that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We can trust him in the waiting, in the middle of our process toward goals and promises. We can trust that Jesus knows what we need and can grow us as we live with him daily. When I enter into the holiday season in a brand new year, I really don't want my focus to be on what 2021 holds for me. That the Lord already knows. But I do want to ask the Lord, how can I grow in 2021? Help me draw near to your presence, Jesus, and teach me through this process of life. Show me what I need to do and point me in the right direction. As this lot... As the last podcast episode of 2020, I want to remind you of a few things and I hope that you will hold these words close as we leave behind some challenging 365 days. We are a citizen of heaven and his kingdom before we are citizens anywhere else. The word of God is not and will never go out of style. 
That's a culture issue, not a spiritual truth. Souls are being one to the Lord every single day, all around the world and in America. Any discouragement or fear is from the enemy, and we must rebuke those negative thoughts instantly. Social media is a gift, but it's only a tool. It is not real life and should not replace real life. Take inventory of your thoughts and emotions, making sure to fast and take time away from the crowds online, much like Jesus did when he was around crowds on earth. Family is the heartbeat of our nation and church. Anything, anything that disrupts the natural makeup of the family according to the Lord's standards is an abomination and we cannot be blinded by political agendas or emotionally driven media. Every child was knit in their mother's womb whether she accepts them or not. We don't call life a life. God does that. But we are called to honor every life and we must do that at all costs. Jesus never changes and is still alive. His principles are not dead and his church is not asleep. It is time that we reconnect with the heart of our Father to prepare our souls for his coming. I pray that you will simplify routines and expectations in order for God to mold you into who he knows you can be. Do not follow influencers or or celebrities of the world and copy what they do, follow after Jesus. Enter into that secret place consistently and may the joy of your salvation flourish every single day. Guys, I love you so very much. Thank you for showing up on this platform with me. If you want more exclusive content and access to my mini podcast series, that's right, I have a mini podcast series called The Real 15, where every single episode is 15 minutes or less. If you want show notes to all of the Bible studies that I've had on the podcast, if you want access to all of my digital devotions and ebooks and audiobooks, even for my regular paperback books, the ebooks and the audiobooks for those, and you want all those files, I encourage you to become a Hello Awesome member on Patreon. All of the funds go towards the ministry of the podcast. It is an exchange of goods for just $5 a month. That's it. Just $5 every single month. You can have access to exclusive content even during this time that I'm taking a break from social media. I am still active, so sign up for my email list. I will keep sending Saturday devotions and sign up to become a Hello Awesome member for just $5 a month. The link is in the show notes. You can also go to patreon.com backslash hello awesome and sign up for just $5 and you will get exclusive access to content that I only share there or give you a special experience. There's also principles on there and you just get personal access to me too. And so it's kind of a back and forth thing. All right, guys, 2020 is about to end. Make it count. Get right with God. If you need me, you know where to find me. I'm taking a break from social media, going dark, as they say. And we'll see what happens in 2021 here on Hello Awesome. Until then, love you and God bless. If you found this episode inspiring or helpful, would you take a screenshot of it and share it on your Instagram stories, tagging me at Hello Awesome Ministries? It will encourage me that you were blessed. Also, don't forget to leave a review and subscribe so you can tune into future episodes. To learn more about Hello Awesome, head to helloawesomeministries.com. Until next time, keep your chin up, beautiful.